this mixed style of communication combines elements from the passive and aggressive styles. The result is an apparent passive surface that is actually an attempt to hide authentic aggressive feelings. The person may experience emotions related to the aggressive style, such as anger, dissatisfaction, or resentment, but wants to avoid the consequences of openly expressing them and the associated opinions. The person desires the effects of the anger they feel towards someone or something, but they make a choice of avoiding the possible negative outcome by not expressing it directly. They will instead use indirect ways to undermine the goals, well-being, and relationships of another person. Here are some examples of passive-aggressive behavior. Forget someone's birthday or an anniversary. Having a headache at the exact moment when you have to help someone in a way that is meaningful to them, like babysitting their child so they can go to the restaurant or the movies. Solving a task in a less than satisfying manner, so that somebody else has to take over. Being repeatedly late to business meetings, or meetings with certain friends. These behaviors activate in relation to the people toward whom you feel anger or other negative emotions. Of course, some of these problems may be genuine, and at times it may become difficult to discriminate between real causes and the passive-aggressive reaction. This leads us to a valid question. How do we make the difference between the two? A way to guide this analysis is the attitude we have toward the negative result we're causing and the associated emotions. Are you feeling any sort of satisfaction that the other one isn't getting what they want? that they have to stay at home because they cannot find another babysitter soon enough, that they have to stay overtime to complete the tasks you didn't finish, that they have to give some explanations to the boss because they maybe recommended you for the job. Do you feel that now you're even? That you've gotten your revenge? Are you acting in this way with a certain frequency? These are all clues that passive-aggressive behaviors may be the answer to those contexts. Remember that when it comes to the passive-aggressive style, it is all about the passive surface hiding authentic aggressive intentions. Emotionally, the passive-aggressive style combines the emotions related to the passive and aggressive styles. Negative emotions and inner events include anxiety, low self-esteem, lowered sense of control over one's own life, guilt and being ashamed. Positive emotions, such as the satisfaction you get from the fact that you think you've gotten even or the relief of dodging responsibility, are once again short-lived. The advantages of the passive-aggressive style are rather few. In addition to the positive emotions I've mentioned earlier, one may find comfort in the fact that it is easier to justify passive-aggressive actions than direct aggressive behaviors and at the same time, responsibility and consequences can be easily avoided. The disadvantages of the passive-aggressive communication style include the negative emotions associated with the passive-aggressive actions, but also the lack of authenticity and openness, and the fact that other people may see this person as irresponsible, disorganized, unskilled, and as expressing no consideration for others. At the same time, the consequences that have been avoided through passive-aggressive actions may be activated if the deceiving behavior is discovered. Because it relies on two rather ineffective communication styles, the passive-aggressive style is also, most of the time, inefficient in regulating one's relationships and inner dynamics.